Good evening. Welcome to worship on this Maundy Thursday. It is the beginning of our traditional three days. Maundy coming from the Latin word mandatum. It is the night when we focus on uh, Jesus' commandment to love one another as I have loved you. And so uh, the service is the, the kickoff. We had a prelude this evening. We won't get a prelude until our a, a postlude until Easter Vigil on Saturday. So it's seen as one kind of full unit uh, uh, service, although um, we have a few sermons in between, so. <laughs> but uh, if, you, if you have a bulletin, that would be helpful since we don't have screens tonight, so uh, everybody have a bulletin, okay? And if you, if you don't want to take it home with you tonight and you want to turn it back in at the table, we'll just reuse them for the next couple of days. All three services are in here, so if you want to preview you can do that too, uh, just not during Seth's sermon tonight. Just a reminder that our worship services continue tomorrow at noon and at 7, and then Easter Vigil is at 7 o'clock on Saturday night, and uh, Easter services on Sunday morning at 8 and 10.30. And I, I think that's good. I invite you to stand as we continue with our call to worship and confession. Trusting in God's steadfast love and compassion, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful Lord, on the night Jesus was betrayed, he washed his disciples' feet and gave them a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. We confess this day that we have not kept this commandment perfectly. We have put our wants above others' needs. We have judged others without knowing their whole story. We have viewed our neighbors as enemies and not as those who bear your holy image. We have lost sight of the love you have for us. Forgive us, Lord for these and all of the other ways we have failed to live up to this commandment. Turn our hearts back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends in Christ, Jesus washed even the feet of Judas, the one who would betray him, showing us that mercy and love of God we know in Christ Jesus knows no bounds. Your sins are forgiven. Your slate is washed clean. God give you the courage, strength, and will to continue the holy work of loving one another in Jesus' name. Amen. We sing hymn number 359, Where Charity and Love Prevail.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, 
I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, so also you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Do you know what I have done to you? It's a haunting question that Jesus asks. We might wonder if he's asking only about that foot washing that he had just done to the disciples or if he's perhaps referring to something more. What is a, was it a question that was meant to capture all the experiences that the disciples had had through the last years traveling up to this point? Do you know what I've done to you and calling you and inviting you to be a part of all this we've had together and privileging you to witness all the signs and miracles? Do you know what I've done? It's a haunting question for all of us. This is, after all, it. This is the night in the upper room with all the disciples, even Judas, one last night. The final hours Jesus has with the disciples before it all goes down. Once they leave the upper room, the scattering will begin. So Jesus uses this time with his disciples to remind them of what binds them together. And what binds them together is not doctrine. It's not common interests, you know. I like that water's been turned into wine. You like that water's been turned into wine. We should hang out. No, it's much more. What binds them together supersedes all those things. It's love. It's love. Not sentimental love, not saccharine greeting card love, but rather an all-consuming love, a sacrificial love, a costly love. Love that will be laying down its life for the sake of someone else. And Jesus, of course, chooses a rather peculiar way to demonstrate that love to the disciples. Right in the middle of the meal, before they probably even had dessert, Jesus does this major interruption. He picks up a bowl, he takes off his robe, he ties on a towel, and one by one on his knees washing the disciples' feet. He lays down not just his robe, but also his status. He humbles himself, and he does what even sometimes a servant wasn't required to do. So it's no wonder in this context, as this is happening, that Peter gets more lines. You know, he's always speaking, always putting his foot in his mouth throughout all these years with Jesus. And he recognizes the outrageous nature of what Jesus is doing. So it's no wonder that he speaks up and says, no, 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 you can't do this for me, Jesus. But it's also no wonder that Jesus responds the way he does. Jesus, in effect, says, I know you don't get it, Peter. Not yet, anyway. But you will get it. And when you do, you'll see why you needed to let me do this to you. Trust me, you will need the memory of me washing your feet, me doing this subservient yet intimate and loving thing for you, especially when the cock is crowed and you have denied even knowing me. You will need to know that I love you, or you might never make it back from the depths of despair that you are about to encounter. Do you know what I have done to you? Jesus asks. I've shown you love. Love that cares nothing about status or rank. Love that is willing to set everything aside, even just to scrub the dirt out from between the toes of these men. Jesus does this strange thing for good reason. He knows that love is what it'll take to get the disciples through, not only the next few days and the trauma that surrounds the events of the trial and the crucifixion and the burial, 
but also to get them through all the challenges, the joys and sorrows that lay even beyond Jesus' return and His ascension. It will require the fierce, self-giving love Jesus has for the disciples and all of people and all of creation. Likewise, it will take the love of the community that Jesus leaves behind. It will require His followers to love one another with that same fierce, self-sacrificial love that Jesus is showing them. Hence, the new commandment, as Pastor Tim mentioned early, earlier, Maundy Thursday coming from the word of, same root as mandate. It's a new mandate, a new law. The new commandment, love one another. Now, an interesting thing about that love-filled new mandate, that new commandment, is that it is directed specifically toward the community composed of Jesus' followers. It's very much of an insider thing. Not for everybody else, just a command to those who have followed Christ. This is not uh, a command that's sort of outward focused, like love your enemies, as Jesus said before, to love the Romans, or to love those who would persecute them, as he said before. Jesus gives that critical instruction in other places. But here on this night, in his final moments with his disciples, you might even imagine yourself in this position, maybe being on your deathbed, and your family has gathered around, and you recognize that this is your last moment with your children, your spouse, your loved ones. And it's important. On this night, Jesus' main concern is giving his disciples one last reminder of the the power, the force of love that binds them together. And so the disciples receive what they need to sustain them through these difficult and terrifying hours in which they and all of us are about to embark. They would need to remember this, even though they had failed Jesus in so many ways, perhaps as we have, denying, running away, betraying that Jesus' love was greater for them than any sin, any failing, any mistake. The same is true of any Christian community. Whether it's a Bible study, a family that's gathered in prayer around a dinner table, a small group or a congregation or even larger a denomination or the church universal, all of us who believe are called and claimed by Christ and commanded to live in love for one another. To make it through whatever the world throws our way, we need this love of Christ to cling to. Perhaps after all we've been through in these past few years, now more than ever we're realizing the need for self-sacrificial love for each other. So it shows us the power, the power that we've all experienced in our lives as we lived in self-sacrificial love for each other, and the power that Christ gives into the community, sets an example, and gives us our marching orders, a love that binds us and that remains strong even when we're apart. Jesus knew how difficult it would be for the disciples coming up to keep their focus, to keep their mission at the forefront of their minds especially when the event of his hour really got rolling. So he blesses them with this new commandment. Love one another as I have first loved you. Love one another. Love one another with a powerful, all-consuming, life-changing, compassionate, forgiving, merciful, relentless love. And so we do not earn Jesus' love. We do not earn it, but because that love was given to us first, because we have come and seen and tasted and seen that the love was good, we now get to take that love and pour it out for others. Do you know what I have done to you? Jesus asks. It's safe to say the disciples probably did not know what had been done to them. They wouldn't know until later, much as we don't know until later with the benefit of hindsight. But on this night, this last night of the world as they knew it, they knew enough. 
They knew Jesus loved them with a pure and life-altering love. They knew he had shown them how to live out that love in acts of humble service. They knew that Jesus' final wish for this little community of followers was that they would be bound together in the love of Christ. Do you know what I have done to you? Jesus asks. I have given you a new commandment. Be loved. Be loved. Be loved. And then go and do likewise. Amen. seated for the prayers. In these holy days, we offer prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. We pray for the church around the world. Write your new commandment of love on the heart of every believer and strengthen pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in humble service for your people. Merciful God, we pray for the good earth you have made. Protect fields, orchards, local farms and gardens. Inspire us with the new life budding around us, that we show more care for plants and all loving creatures. Merciful God. 
We pray for leaders in every land. Kindle compassion and equity in all who are called to administer justice. Guide all in positions of power away from temptations of abuse and toward work for the common good. Merciful God. We pray for all who are in need, especially those who are incarcerated or unjustly accused. Illuminate paths to end oppression and form supportive communities gathered around a common commitment to justice and peace. Merciful God. We pray for this congregation and all who gather to receive your body and blood this night. Fill us at this shared table and nourish us well to heed your example of grace. Send us in love to those who cannot be with us due to illness, especially Julie, Louise, Dale, Chris, John, Scott, Adana, Dolores, Deanne, Steve, Bev, Ruth, and Fran. Merciful God. We give thanks for those who have died in the faith. Teach us by their example and comfort us as we mourn. Renew us by the promise of life together with you. Merciful God. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment and share that peace with one another. you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Dear friends in Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The table is ready. Come and eat. You may be seated and then make note that we will be serving communion at two stations this evening. So we invite you to come down the center aisle. We'll have a station in the middle for gluten-free wafers if you have that need. Otherwise, uh, you can then go to one on each side. Pastor Seth and I will have uh, the wafers first, and then uh, we'll have communion servers help with uh, wine after that. When you are done, you can put the empty glasses in those white um, bowls there as you go back to your seats on the outer aisle. So all is ready. Come to the Lord's table.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Our service concludes with the stripping of the altar, the night that began in the intimate confines of the upper room and the Last Supper ends with Jesus' betrayal and arrest. As we look ahead to Good Friday, the removal of the pyramids and other worship appointments reminds us of the humiliation and the barrenness of the cross. You may be seated. forsaken me why so far from saving me so far from the words of my groaning my God my God I cry out by day but you do not answer by night but I find no rest But as for me, I am a worm, and not human, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn, they curl their lips, they shake their heads. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. And there is no one to help. Many young bulls encircle me. They open wide their jaws at me. Like a slashing and roaring lion, I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My strength is dried up. Packs of dogs close in on me. A band of evildoers circles round me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones while they stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing they cast lots. Yet from you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn. <laughs> 